right, man, it is absolutely freezing this morning, literally. Big hard cold front came through South Louisiana, but we're supposed to have fairly calm conditions today, so my good buddies, Chris Macaluso, Justin Bowles, and I are heading out today in Justin's 24-foot Skeeter, which is covered with ice. Justin's up in it, doing his imitation of, who's a famous ice skater? Brian Boitano. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we're hoping water temperatures are not too low, still in that 50 degrees plus range, and we can catch some speckled trout today. If not, it might be a redfish type of day. They could be grouped up if those water temps are in the 40s, but you gotta go to know. We'll see when we get out there. That was a brutally cold ride, but now we're on site at the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet. Water's pretty good, not as good as I've seen it in here, but we're about to make the first cast of the day, so let's see what we got. Now, which direction you want to work to him and then double back? Yeah, that's fine. What, uh, what jerk bait are you throwing? KVD 200. I'm gonna just move this All right, that's, yeah, well, that might be the best thing to do. This wind's brutal. It's pretty much as 90 degrees, huh? C-Mac! What you got there, C-Mac? Is he a netter? C-Mac is throwing a KVD 200, huh? And sexy shad? There he goes! Kind of a typical cool water strike, man. All he had was a back hook. Right. How much does that bait dive, do you know? Top of your head? Three to five. Three to five? Is that much? Yeah. Okay. That's crazy there, up that. Up that and far away from the rocks. Yeah. I think I got a jerk bait tied on, but it's that uh rip shad. That thing dives about six inches. Yeah. It's something about that pause, man, in the cold weather, I think. C Mac. You want me to net him? I don't know. Yeah, let's net him. Take your time, C Mac. Don't uh, don't horse him. He's not that big. He's not that. He's not that good. It's a keeper trout, though. Not a bad fish. Keeper yeah, trout. Probably got another one in here, Todd. It's just not the same color. I don't care about color. I might bum one because I know this thing's not going to get down. Yeah, this thing's diving. No more than a foot. See, Matt, give me that other one if you don't mind. I got a whole tackle box full of jerk bait. Do you? Because yeah. I, I pulled mine out when I consolidated. You got a mirror lip? Yeah. I'll take that. Warm it up again, yeah, it is. It's probably going to be nice by noon or so. See, Matt got him. Came up. It's a good fish. That's a good fish, C Mac. Make me put a jerk bait on. I think we are. That's a good fish. That's a lot better than the other one. Netter? I don't. I don't know if he's a netter, but it's a healthy trout. C Mac was he closer to the rocks? Yeah, he was closer than the last one I caught. That's Seemed true. like he was. Good thing we brought C Mac, Justin. Fifty. Almost 56 degree water, Justin. That's incredible. See, Matt, got him another one. This one's small. That's what she said. He's swimming at you, huh? That's not a bad fish. So you got another one of those? On jigs, not jerk baits, right? I'm with you. I don't know, it seemed kind of big for an ear clear. <laughs> and the grandma goes, it sure did. <laughs> Parenthood. It's the older movie from the 80s. Funny as hell. Oh, there he is. There he is. That's a, that's a good fish. Yeah, that's a good fish. I don't know if I need the net or not. I'll let you know. Yeah, it's a good fish. Get the net.
I mean, it's not the size of the one Justin caught a few weeks ago, but it's not a bad trout. Oh, Justin. Get him, get him, get him! Your rod was in my face when I was going down. You gotta be kidding. You got my bait, yeah. That's like the classic thing you don't want to do with a jerk bait. Hook the bait. Where was he? He was, he was, I'd say about halfway off. I think that was on purpose. Justin finally got him one. Let me net him. You want me to net him? <laughs> Let me get the net. It's a big one, Justin. Jerk bait called, and they're running out of you. Justin, you want me to net him? Is he big? Is he right up on the rocks? Good fish, good fish. We are going to have to scratch the itch and go fish against the wall this morning. I wouldn't mind fishing inside the wall. Water's better. It's good for a lot of hang-ups. Yeah, definitely. I just missed one. You missed him? Yep. You missed the hang-up? Trout. Fish on! What you got there, C-Mac? Trout. It's a nice fish. Nice fish, really nice fish. Man, I hate this spot. It's the worst spot. Oh, there he is. Got him, Justin? Mm -hmm. Not as big as C-Max. A C-Max what? That's a good fish. It's a good fish. I hate this spot. It's terrible. Spot. It makes two of us. Oh. Harsh man missed him one. The main cork, the bottom of the cork is bigger than the neck of the bottle. Yeah. Get him, boss. That's a good man. Look how dark this fish is. Man, is he dark. It's a beautiful fish. Nice, oh good God, fish. I've had that happen. Well, the fish are icy cold, Todd. Yes, they are. The fish are precisely 56 degrees. But they are biting. They're right up on that wall, huh? First one I caught was kind of on under the boat. Was he? Last couple have been yeah, pretty close to the wall. I've looked at it on my depth finder before. And like right up against the wall. It kind of goes up, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Like mud is piled up on that wall, and sometimes I think they sit on that little ledge. Yeah, there's a pretty significant depth there. Yeah. Justine! Good fish. I doubt that. He's not seven pounds. He didn't come up at all, huh? That's a good fish. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Nice. Dude, look at that. Wow. A bass against the wall. Catching all these speckled trout and right in the midst of it. <laughs> Largemouth bass. A peaceful coexistence. If only the Republicans and the Democrats 
can get along as well. As this is speckled trout and bass. Trout. All right, it's not any secret where we are and what we're doing. We're along the wall right here in, it's called the Chalmette Wall. That's what everybody calls it. We're kind of halfway between the rocks on that end and the bend on that end. Oh, wait, there he is. And Justin's got one. <laughs> and so all we're doing is kind of just hitting spot lock, holding in an area when we get on some action. Sometimes we'll catch 20, maybe 22. <laughs> in a particular area and then sometimes you know we move on maybe catch three four five we're just kind of working our way down down this wall now a lot of times this is extremely crowded people fish this all the time it gets very crowded uh, we have seen a few boats come in most of them have left there's a ton of boats fishing right over there in that shallow water on the marsh side but over here man the fish are just barely tapping the baits hot bait of the day by far has been a pink champagne matrix shad fished on a 3 8 ounce death grip jig head and those death grips are just better jig heads i don't know what it is if it's the roundness of the head or what it is but they just produce more fish so we're catching a lot of our fish by throwing right up against this wall the water's a bit shallower there and it kind of drops off steeply and as you kind of walk it down that ledge that seems to be where the fish are now this area is accessible from the launches that line Paris Road it's also accessible from where we launched today in Chef Pass it gets very very crowded this time of year but you can always escape the wind anything but a, a southeast or hard northwest wind although this particular spot we're fishing is really good on a northwest wind hooked up oh look at that he came up and even jumped like a tarpon Big ones do. And that one. <laughs> Generally goes. Oh, a fish. Come on up. Come on up. That's a good trout. All right. Man, they're all good fish. There we go. There's a fish. That's the first one that really just absolutely tattooed it. That's a good fish. That's a stud there. That's like that's like 13, maybe 13 and a half. My wrist is getting sore. The Stinky Pinky. That would have been a much better name for this bait. Uh, this whole area, whether it be Lake Pontchartrain uh, or the Mr. Go or an Intracoastal, you know, it's an area that's been, I would say, the most productive speckled trout area in the state, really, for the last, you know, since October. There's been a lot of trout caught in this area, and it was an area that was inundated with fresh water when the Bonnie Carey Spillway was open. You know, obviously, when the spillway was open, there's no doubt that uh, the trout got chased out and went to other places, and it was during the summer, uh, so they went other places to spawn, but they really they come in here and they eat because there's so much food that gets left behind when the spillway flushes through here. You know, there's generally a lot of shrimp in here, a lot of croakers, a lot of mullet, a lot of pogey, just a lot of stuff for the speckled trout to eat. And I think that's why you're seeing them in Lake Pontchartrain, Lake St. Catherine, the Mr. Go, all places that got flooded by the Bonnie Carey spillway a few months ago. The other thing that's significant is just the investment that's been made in protecting New Orleans here. You know, the Mr. Go is a man-made channel that was constructed, uh, began construction in, in the late 40s, into the 1950s and it was supposed to be a big shipping artery but well, never really worked out that way what it did though was destroyed about 
25,000 acres of marsh and changed another 250,000 acres of marsh. And it just let a ton of salt water come up into this estuary and it killed a lot of cypress swamp and it really changed this place a lot. It became a highway for hurricane storm surges uh, to come straight into New Orleans. So that's why this wall had to be built to protect the city of New Orleans from flooding uh, because so much marsh had been lost from the construction of this channel uh, that the city had become extremely vulnerable. Well, I think there's a misconception that speckled trout need extremely salty water year round. Once the spawn is over, those fish don't really need that high salinity water. And we'll come in here and catch speckled trout right next to bass. There's trout, bass, redfish, flounder, uh, all kinds of fish uh, in that in that marsh. Uh, and you're catching them kind of in the same areas right next to each other. That's the cool thing about this marsh over by Lake Pontchartrain now is that you've got a lot of freshwater grass beds. It holds a tremendous amount of food for everything that swims out here. Speckled trout, redfish, bass. Uh, and you could spend half your day chasing trout, half your day chasing bass, and pretty good chance you're going to catch a bunch of them. Came back, came back. I saw the rod, Ooh, ooh. Like a good one, huh? Ooh. You got a little tug on it. Hey, let me get the net, hang on. Yeah. Here, here. Let me get some momentum so this fish can slap Justin in the face. Where's he at? Stay away! <laughs> Stay away! Stay away! Where's he? I got him. Gorilla! Kid. <laughs> I mean, he's no, he's, he's he's probably 18 inches. It's wow. a good, real good fish. Oh, that is a big man. You know, when I was a kid back in the 80s, when we used to catch them on this wall, <laughs> <laughs> they were all solid fish. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> the good old days, man. We'll never go back. We used to fish in that fantail. We'd have the whole Florida fantail covered with trout. Wow. And all we had to use was market bait or strips of mullet. We another... never had to fish with no dumb plastics. Not, not, not another boat out here with just us in the wall. Right. They ain't never going to make another boat like a manatee. <laughs> All right, let me show you something. Seventy-five speckled trout—that's our limit. Absolutely fantastic day here in South Louisiana, fishing with two really good anglers, Justin Bowles and Chris Macaluso. Could not have had a better time. What a blast! And this action shows no sign of abating. It's been going on for weeks, no doubt about it. You get the conditions right in this area, you're gonna whack them. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.